Hey, my name is Michael with MacArthur Woodworks, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I built this beautiful river rock table for a client. So I started with this piece of black walnut slab that had some crotch figure, as you can see right here, that I thought would look great for a river rock table. So I'm squaring up the ends here, and then in just a second, you'll see me rip it up the middle to a spot where I had a good amount of wood on each side for a river in the middle. I'm really only going to talk in this video when I feel like I need to explain something, but I promise I answer all comments. If you have any questions, just leave them below and I'll be happy to explain any step that I did. I just don't want to be rambling on when I don't really need to be because I feel like most of this is pretty self-explanatory as far as what I'm doing in the video. But please leave me a comment or a question and I'll be happy to answer it or you can email me or message me on Instagram or something and I'll get back with you, I promise. So I usually only do this with my larger projects, and here I'm just sealing up the live edge with some tabletop epoxy. Um, I haven't ever done it on my any of my smaller projects like charcuterie boards or clocks or anything like that, but this just ensures that there won't be any bubbles coming out of holes in the wood of the live edge, or worst case would be a bug coming out of it or something if your wood wasn't totally dried, which you'd, you'd have your own problems then. But I just do it on the bigger projects because I've seen other people do it, really. I am going to take this moment to talk about Super Clear Epoxy, which is my favorite. This is their liquid glass that allows you to pour up to two, four inches thick. I've tried, I think, three inches before, and it turned out great. I use this on all my charcuterie boards. Any project you see me do with epoxy is super clear. This bottom layer I'm about to do right now will be blue, but you will see the reason why I use super clear in just a minute when I do the clear layer, so stay tuned for that. If you'd like to try out super clear epoxy or just to get a refill, I do have a link that you can use. It'll be in the description of this video. This is another company I love, Baltic Day Pigments. Here I'm going to combine, or my wife is going to combine, three different, I almost said flavors, not flavors, pigments, that create this beautiful color you'll see in a minute. That's always one of my favorite parts of the project, having the pigment sitting on top of the epoxy, and then hitting it with the drill to swirl it in to see the color that you're going to end up with. If you'd like to try Baltic Day Pigments, you can use my code MAC10, M-A-C-1-0, at checkout for 10% off. I'm going to apologize for the next minute or so of this video. There's a little shaky cam and I don't really know why. I know this is supposed to be the most satisfying part of an epoxy pouring video, but I promise there are other great parts and you can still enjoy this. 
If you've stayed with me this long, I'd love for you to consider giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel. I know I'm not the most regular poster of YouTube videos, but I would like to get better at that, and I have some videos lined up that I just need to edit, like I'm doing with this one two years later. But I will be better about it, and I'd love for you to consider subscribing. Also check me out on Instagram. I post over there more regularly. So after the bottom layer of blue epoxy had cured, we put a layer of rocks down and my wife helped me organize those in a pretty pattern. Looking back, I would have let the epoxy cure for a little bit longer or cure all the way really because these rocks being heavier than what I had embedded previously on epoxy pores, the rocks um, sunk in the epoxy. And as you'll see in a later part of the video, they actually came through to the other side of the epoxy in some parts but looking at the top of the table like the client will for many decades to come they'll never notice that part of it and it won't be anything that matters but just for future reference I would let it sit a little bit longer so here I am mixing the clear epoxy and this is the reason why you should use super clear epoxy Just in case I had not convinced you earlier of using super clear epoxy, this video I think does a good job to show you the clarity that you get when you use super clear. Again, I've got a link in the description if you'd like to try super clear or just refill what you already have. This is another dead part in the audio, so I would just love for you to consider while you're watching this video to check out the links in the description to subscribe to the channel and look at my affiliate links down there. You can get some pretty sweet deals on products that I love and use. 
can also check me out on Instagram at MacArthur Woodworks. Now that it's properly cured and out of the mold, I took it to my friend's house who let me use their drum sander. This is the first time I'd ever used a drum sander actually. Um, this is probably not the best project to use a drum sander for because it took forever, but it worked well. I just saved you from about 60 passes through that drum sander. But now that it is flat and surfaced, I took it to the track saw and we're getting the square edge. I then took that square edge and put it my TSO 90 degree adapter deal for the Festool track saw. And so I got a 90 degree angle here and I was able to reference that for the rest of the project. Watch out for rocks when you're using your track saw. Time I'm actually recording this audio. I did this project over two years ago, so it's funny to see this old router that I used to use that has since died on me. So I have a new router now, but this one served me well for the price. And so here I'm just putting a clean, crispy chamfer around all the edges. This video came out when I was um, trying out the sandpaper you're going to see me use here. I do love this sandpaper, but not for this application, which I needed just a really aggressive sandpaper, which I would highly recommend the Merca Abronet. That's what I usually use. This sandpaper is great for fine finishing, and I use it for 120 on, like you see me using here. But um, for the 80 grit aggressive, it was not the best, I would say. At this point in the video, I've gotten the table squared and flattened and sanded on the top of it. So now I'm going to mark the spots where the table legs will go. So I'm just using threaded inserts here. This is a little trick I learned from one of you YouTubers where you just put tape on the depth that you need to drill. That way you don't drill through the top of your pretty table. I don't know if this step is totally necessary where you're putting Starbond on the threaded inserts before you drive them in. I've seen people do it online, but Starbond is always good to use. I've got a code for that as well. Aren't you surprised? It'll be in the description of this podcast, but it is MAC10 like most of my other codes where you can get 10% off anything at Starbond. At this point in my shop, again, this is early 2021, I believe, my shop was really dusty, so I wanted to do the pour for the clear coat inside my house. 
So there I was just making sure it's level, and here I'm using super clear tabletop epoxy, which is incredibly clear and usually does not have any bubbles if you mix it correctly and ap apply it correctly. So this is always the best product to use for a flood coat. So here I'm doing a thick coat of it, and I'm gonna you'll see me wiping it with my hands to make sure I get every spot on the top and the sides of the table. And then I wait for that to get tacky. So it could be anywhere from 8 to 14, 16 hours later. And then I do a coat of clear coat and do not touch it. I let it drip over the edges by itself. And that just ensures a perfect, crispy, clear, as you see here, a coat. And this one was so clear, I really thought about not doing another one. But since it was going to be somebody's table that they were paying a pretty penny for, I wanted to make sure it was perfect. And I'm glad I did. So this is just mixing that second coat. And as you'll see here in a second, I'm just going to pour it right on top of the previous one after that 18 hour period or so. This is really where you want to be able to touch the epoxy and you get a fingerprint, but your finger doesn't stick to it. That's the perfect time to pour it. So you just want to pour it over the whole thing and do not touch it. Let it set by itself and run out to where it's supposed to. You just don't get it on your socks like I'm wearing here. <laughs> I don't really know why, but this is always one of my favorite parts of the project. You have the drips on the underside. Even if you try to prevent them by wiping them, you still inevitably get spots on the underneath that need to be sanded off the tabletop, and so you just get really aggressive sandpaper with the Rotex and just eat it up. I think this is my favorite shot of the entire video. Watch this. Oh yeah. I'm using Rubio Monocoat Pure on the underside of the table. If you've stayed here this long, this is the part of the video I was telling you about where you can see the rocks from the underside of the table. They sank too low uh, when the epoxy wasn't cured enough. It just kind of sank through the epoxy, so I would have waited a little bit longer on that. But here she is finished with the table legs the customer wanted. This is one of the most crystal clear projects I've ever done, and this is the table in the customer's house where it will be. And you can just see every little detail of the epoxy and the rock and the wood. This project shows that super clear epoxy is truly just a magnificent product that I stand behind and love to use, and I would love for you to consider using it. If you enjoyed this video or it was helpful to you in any way, I'd love for you to consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel. I'm going to post more over there. This is one of my favorite photos right here. I use it on my website, and I hope you enjoyed this video.